Good morning, children. Today we are meeting for the general science class for class five, and you are seeing me for the first time. So stay safe, stay healthy, and keep. You have got ample of scope to continue studies. You have got sufficient time to read and revise. So please go for that. We start now. The circulatory system. The first chapter, circulatory system. Our body has got many organs. Some are external organs like our ears, nose, the teeth, the hands, the skin. Skin is the largest organ, obviously. They perform their activities: eyes to see, ears to hear, nose for the smelling, olfaction, or we call it. These all are the external organs of the body. At the same time, we have got quite a few internal organs. They are like stomach, heart, kidney, liver. Liver is a multifunctional organ. Heart, pumping organ. It pumps the blood to the body. Stomach is for digestion. What is called liver, sorry, kidney is for filtration. These all are the activities shown by the internal organs of the body. So we start today the circulatory system. Cell is the basic unit of life. We call the structural and functional unit of life is called the cell. The basic structural functional unit of life is called cell. A group of cells working together we call a tissue. A group of tissues working together we call an organ. And a group of organs working together we call an organ system. Human body is made up of means quite a few organ systems. Like integumentary system has the skin, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the reproductive system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system. There are many systems in our body. So, an organ system which comprises the heart, the blood vessels, say arteries, veins, and capillaries, and the blood, and transport things to the cell. removes metabolic waste from the cell and at the same time it maintains the internal pressure and temperature of the body we call it the circulatory system it is very important as it has got all things to distribute to the body and collect the metabolic waste products from the body without which our body our cells will not work actually our body what you call our body is made up of cells and cells are the basic unit of life both for structure and function what we do we are looking These are cell function. Our eyes have got rod cell and cone cell. They help in vision. We have got the muscle. It is made up of muscle cells that contracts and that contract and relax to move the body parts. Means anything. Respiration. We breathe. We respire. These are also happen to be in the cell. So cellular activity. And if we analyze an organ of the body, say hand, it is made up of skin. The muscle, the nerve, the blood. If I go for now, the come to the topic, the blood. Blood is a tissue. Tissue has got number of cells working together. Blood has got three different kinds of cells: erythrocytes, the red blood corpuscles; leukocytes, the white blood corpuscles; and thrombocytes, the platelets. They have got their own function. But besides them, their own function, they perform some common function. so all the activities of the life we have the cells responsible yeah all the function all the structures of the body actually are made up of cells so here we have got the organ system which comprises the heart the blood vessel artery vein and capillary and the blood and helps in transporting different required things to the cell and removing the metabolic wastes from the cell is and maintaining internal pressure and temperature is called the circulatory system the the heart is one of the main organ here the pumping organ one of the main organs of the body the pumping organ that pumps the blood to the body and collects the thing from the body this beating of the heart heart beats 72 mil type in a minute heart has got if you take a stethoscope stethoscope is the organ which fills the heart beat and there is another that is called sphygmo manometer stethoscope
it measures the heartbeat and the sigma manometer it measures the blood pressure So heart is heart beats 72 times a minute. This means one beat takes about 0.83 seconds. This heart beating is normal during the normal activity. Yeah, when we are at rest, it beats normally. But it increases quite fast. It beats when we are in action, we are activity. We are running. We are doing some strenuous exercise. Naturally, the heart beat. increases and this is to supply the food nutrients and oxygen to the cell in sufficient quantity so that the energy is released during respiration respiration is the only process to release energy in the body and that energy we need to perform all the activities the heart is an organ it has got four chambers the upper chambers are called auricles and the lower chambers are called ventricles upper chambers they are the receiver of the blood they remain connected with the veins of the body on the other hand the lower chambers are called ventricles they pump the blood to the body to the tissues and they are connected to arteries so ventricular when the auricles are the upper chambers two chambers two auricles are there our heart is four chamber dot in fact birds and mammals have got four chamber dot reptiles and amphibians they have got three chamber dot and the fish has got two chamber dot so these all are the chambers which help in circulation of the blood auricles are the receivers and ventricles are the pumpers the senders so we have got four chambers the upper two chambers are the auricles and the lower two chambers are the ventricles auricles this blue part you can see these are the these are actually it is not blue in color it is dull red in color we just to give a contrast thing we draw it in blue and this shows the deoxygenated blood blood is bright red in color when it has got oxygen with the hemoglobin we call it oxyhemoglobin and the when the oxygen is used up we go for we take the we can see the blood with the dull color and that is that is sent to the oxygenating organ again to the lungs for oxygenation and finally to come back to the ventricle left ventricle through left auricle to be pumped to the body it takes the oxygen from the lungs and pumps it to the body again from the body it takes the deoxygenated blood to the heart and from there it takes to the lungs so there are two circulations we see these two circulations are called pulmonary circulation this circulation heart lung heart this is the pulmonary circulation and heart body heart is the systemic circulation so we see that when the blood is there with oxygen is bright red in color and that carries oxygen to the cell after being used up oxygen when is used up the blood is but blood comes back to the heart to send it to the lungs for oxygenation again arteries veins and capillaries can be compared here simply keep in mind if it is just beneath the skin just under the skin we call it superficially arranged which is normally which are normally seen they are called the veins arteries are quite deep seated in the muscle in the organs not exactly in the organs but around the organs arteries are seen with the protection of muscles arteries have got extremely high pressure if there is no 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 there is no protection for that that they may rupture so they are deep seated and covered by the other tissues on the other hand the capillaries are found in the tissues in they move by in a network in between the cells so as to exchange material with the cells arteries have got thick muscular wall and cavity lumen lumen is there cavity is very narrow vein is little more and it is very thin tube in case of capillary and capillary is unilayer only one layer is there 
there is no musculature there there is no muscular layer there and capillary extends the area of exchange of things between the cells and the blood so the heart the blood vessel blood vessel there see i told you then comes the blood blood is a red colored fluid in him in vertebrates in invertebrates it is not red in color it is red in color only due to the red blood cell present there containing hemoglobin so there are there's two parts of the blood one is the blood plasma that contributes 55 percent of the blood and the blood cell that contributes 45 percent of the blood this 55 percent of the blood is mostly water 90 to 92 percent water is there in blood plasma it's a straw color fluid and it contains about 7.8 to 8 percent dissolved solids and cells we see there are three cells erythrocytes already i told you erythrocytes leukocytes and thrombocytes erythrocytes contain hemoglobin they are biconcave disc both side there is concave structure so as to increase the surface area for taking oxygen more and more white blood cell white blood copper cells the leukocytes they are supposed to be protecting the body they kill the disease causing germs and protect our body and finally thrombocytes thrombocytes have got the property to clot the blood so as to prevent excess loss of blood from the body normally when we get a cut blood keeps flowing out when blood keeps flowing out you have got a restricted amount of blood in the body normally a male has got more or less 5.5 liters of blood average and the female has got 4.5 liters of blood 4.5 to 5 and 5 to 5.5 this is the range of the blood present in the body so these cells together perform many functions individually rbc red blood copper cells they are meant for carriage of oxygen wbc for protection and platelet thrombocytes are for blood clotting